what's gonna happen in the next pandemic? How can we prepare ourselves? If you don't have your health, what do you have? You are a functional medicine doctor. Join us as we blend modern and ancient wisdoms to be well now. We were open all the way through COVID. We treated people the entire time through COVID. We took care of our patient base. We treated people with COVID, without COVID, obviously with back, neck pain. We continued on. It's so interesting because I met you before COVID. Then I was working broadcast media, mainstream news, and I got so wrapped up in the vaccines and everything. I ended up getting the vaccine. I, I didn't really see you for years. And then my own life went through some turmoil. I kind of reconnected with you, started you know doing acupuncture. We started this podcast. And so I think back like, what would have the pandemic been like had I had you by my side for sure. guidance as opposed to literally talking to the the Utah Health Department every day and hearing the doctors tell me about the vaccines. And anyway, we've learned a lot. You've learned a lot. Dr. Ron Dumar, I'm your patient, Nick McGurk. I'm your curious patient, as we say in the podcast. But what's going to happen in the next pandemic? How can we prepare ourselves for the next one based on what you've learned? Because there's, there's a buzz that the next one's coming. Yeah, there absolutely is a buzz. And we're hearing a lot about bird flu, avian flu. Uh, it's coming. People are warning us. Uh, in a lot of ways, there's farms that are uh, slaughtering thousands of chickens, uh, thousands of birds that they're getting rid of completely because of uh, an infection, because of a virus. They're trying to prevent it from sp spreading to human uh, again. So, And that's possible? It, it is possible. This is what we've seen in the past, too. There was, yeah. a, what was it, 2007 was a, it was avian bird flu, I think, as well. Uh, and so... This is something we need to be prepared for. And it's not something that we need to fear. And so what we want to do is we want to empower you today. We want to empower our audience. What I want to do with my patients is help give them solutions, things that they can do so that they feel they're protected as well as possible. And any protection that is offered, any protection that we give, even from uh, the medical standpoint, the vaccine, there's a, there's a uh, disclaimer with it. This does not offer 100% protection. It was, it was a little bit ludicrous to me during COVID that uh, people were so confident, the president and everyone else, so confident in the vaccine, suggesting that people would not get the uh, virus if they got the vaccine. So you That's were, you never were, been the case with any vaccine ever in history. So you were telling your patients this? Like, what, what, what would you... I want to get to... Well... Well, yeah, this is where we are, right? This is where so, we are. Yes, we were tell I was telling patients this. Hey, um, they would ask me what my thoughts or my opinions were, and uh, I would I would tell them what my opinions were, and I would also tell them it was important for them to research. That's for me. I think it's most important for you, uh, individuals, to have good information on your side to make sure that you uh, feel comfortable with the information that you're gleaning, and that you can feel. Um, secure in back using that information to back up your decisions. Because if you're not comfortable with the source of information, with the source of education that you're getting, then you're never going to be able to back that up when it comes to dealing with somebody in a, in an airport or dealing with a, uh, an employer or dealing with someone who might suggest they need to force you to do something a different way. Prevention is never as sexy as, you know, reaction after the crisis. But we're going to talk about how to get yourself ready for the pandemic. And mindset is huge. Yes. What does that even mean? Well, one of the interesting things is we learned that during the COVID-19 pandemic, within the first year of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, mental health, uh, anxiety, and depression had gone up worldwide, globally, by 25%. That's massive. That's huge. So reports of anxiety and depression uh, surging during times of pandemic. Everyone's worried. And why are they worried? They're worried because there's this darkness that they don't understand. And I, w I referred to it a lot during the pandemic. I actually did a lot of podcasts during the pandemic. Um, and I talked a lot about this vulnerability. And I think that's literally what healthcare is. For most people, they don't understand their bodies. They don't know exactly how their physiology works. They don't know what's wrong with them. And they're dependent and relying on a, pro a professional or healthcare individual to give them that information and to take care of their bodies as well as possible. Like we literally in our society rely on those health professionals. 
So w- that's a place of vulnerability. Now you go to somebody who's a health professional, you want them to give you the ideal information, the, mo- the best information for you and for your body, right? So you're entirely vulnerable in that. It's a place of darkness, let's put it that way. It's like the dark because it's not a place that is entirely light. You don't have all the education and you would have to do a lot of research to try to educate yourself enough to where those things could become light to you. Okay. So what do you advise people to do now? So now what we need to do in order for our mindset, we need to be as educated as possible. And we need to decide, first of all, what am I okay with? What is my philosophy on health? Right? What is my philosophy? Do I Am I the type of person that says we should prevent something from happening before it occurs? Like we should do everything we can to try to prevent it? Or am I the kind of individual that says, well, let's just respond to a crisis when I'm in a time of crisis? Okay, And th- those are both legitimate places to be. If you're like, I'm just going to go on with my life and live however I want to live. And then if I literally feel something wrong then I'll do it. Then I'll start taking action. That's fine, right? But then that's going to lead to you being, uh, possibly choosing a different care provider uh, than someone who might be more proactive. So just decide, first of all, am I more of the proactive health individual or am I the reactive health individual? And I think it's interesting that some people might be that across the board for themselves. Absolutely. They might be financially proactive, but they eat Taco Bell every night. Or they might be vice versa. Right. You mean in different aspects of yeah, their life. Yeah, I just, I just sure. realized in my life yeah. that I'm more like the proactive guy on the health front. But there's other things where I'm like, it's fine. I'll just wait till something really acute happens and then I'll deal with it. Yeah, yeah. I just re- That was just an awareness. No, that's point. a really like, good point oh, because it's a behavioral thing as well yeah. for people. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily uh, encompass every aspect of their life, right? And it's a gr- it's a good tool. I actually have a financial uh, manager. Um, he he helps me a lot with my finances, and he talks to me uh, in a similar type of way, which is why I love what he does. Is he's like, look, we're talking about prevention here, and we're talking about longevity, and that's th- mm-hmm. those are my words, yeah, right? Those are and, your and words. he's like, also what we want to do is uh, we want to optimize the gains, right, that you're getting. But, but when we look at optimization, we're not just looking at optimization now, meaning like, how do I feel right now? And am I trying to just get rid of what's happening right now? Or am I trying to set the stage for the future so that my goals, objectives, dreams, wishes, hopes, and desires can all be managed appropriately in the future, right? Or are we just trying to meet what's happening right now? So So that does play a role in financial management, every aspect of our life. But some things that you can do to help yourself hedge against the mental aspect. Uh, Number one, have a plan like we talked about right there. Decide whether you're the, whether you're the individual that's going to be uh, proactive or reactive in your, when it comes to your health. And if you're the proactive, well, this is the perfect podcast for you because we're telling you things to do each day uh, that you can actually choose to be healthy now. Some things that we love to do in our office uh, to help with mindset uh, is uh, things like breath work, meditation, uh, yoga. Um, and one of the things I love that we do here a lot is actually heart math. If, you, if you're not familiar with heart math, it uses uh, heart rate variability monitoring to assess a person's um, autonomic state, the state of their nervous system, as you're going through essentially a uh, a, a session, okay? And it allows us to be able to detect uh, triggers that an individual has, and then to unravel what may be happening uh, or uncover what may be occurring in that trigger, and then release a lot of those uh, tensions or a lot of those traumas. And we use breath work, tapping, uh, yoga, we use a variety of uh, different mindset techniques to help them clear that. So heart math is actually a really good uh, proactive strategy to um, being resilient during a pandemic. Okay. That, that's all you got for me? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's sufficient. <laughs> my heart opened mindset. up and my, uh, my voice cracked. We got your bit. chakras going here, huh? Apparently, apparently so. Uh, homeoprophylaxis. 
You got a lot of bottles sitting right here. Yes. Yeah. So these are uh, this these are um, homeopathic. I don't, think, I don't think we can see them. I think we got to go. These are homeopathic remedies here. More in the center. Uh, we have homeopathic remedies for the flu, for coronavirus, for malaria, for hepatitis A, for measles. Um, uh, I recently I recently helped a missionary uh, prepare for his mission by giving him a good immunization plan. This is homeoprophylaxis essentially is educating your body, educating your body against pathogenic invasion or diseases that it might come in contact with. So if you're a world traveler, right, this is something you may want to utilize from now, uh, now and then, but it's something that you can do proactively before you go uh, and it's something that you can, and depending on how long you're going to be staying in a certain region, you can do another dose while you're there. Okay. Um, so homeoprophylaxis trains the body and the environment to create an environment that is going to be resistant to uh, certain diseases that you may encounter in the environment that you're going to be in. Would they? I mean, this is like vaccinations, but more natural. The, it, or yes, would they have that for? We don't like to the call them vaccinations because they're the. Um, like, how does it work? I know we should do a whole podcast on this, so I'm a little abs- absolutely. I'm a little wary that you're just couching this in a five point plan. Well, I've been We've never to do a podcast and, on this, and we will. <laughs> yeah, but I figured like, I would just plug it in because I was like, okay, Nick, I'm going to talk about it whether you want me to or not. Okay, well, then, maybe, okay. maybe that was too much strong arm of me. Well. Are these vaccines? There's a bunch of little dots in here. I'm trying to figure out what this is. This is meningitis so let me put it 200C. This way. Let me put it this way. These have been studied right along with vaccines uh, in con- conjunction with vaccines uh, and found to be just as effective uh, as vaccines in many cases. They've also uh, found that these uh, homeoprophylaxis have been utilized in cases where vaccines were a, a vaccine uh, production scale of production program was either too expensive to justify doing it, right? Uh, based on uh, the the area of the world or the community, uh, and also they've they've been used in places where, um, well, it, I'm in more work, indigenous though. cultures. Yeah, I don't know how do they work. So, well, they you ingest them. Okay. There's little beads, yep. and you ingest them. You'll take them, you put it in a cap, and you basically put it under your tongue and let it dissolve into your system. And then that will um, deliver to your body a signature, essentially, of the original source disease. And that gives you a certain small amount of it so that uh, you're not going to be overwhelmed uh, or getting super sick by it. But the next time you come in contact with something like that, your body has been trained to understand it. And would you have that for the next thing? I mean, how, who makes this, how do they get this ready for like, let's, let's say it's avian flu. Well, so just like, just like, uh, you know, we don't live in the dark ages, just like, uh, the pharmaceutical companies, uh, have their labs and they create formulas and they create, um, medications and drugs and vaccines, and they do that in their lab, and they have their preservatives and all the things that they put into their to their uh, substances. Uh, homeopathics uh, also have labs. Homeopaths have labs. They have uh, a significant production capacity. They have the ability to access original source disease uh, because of the standards of the labs that they have. Uh, there are certain facilities that you have to have, and certain. Um, there are certain requirements for your facility, uh, okay. you know, th- that you have to maintain in order to, say, handle an original source disease. You can't just have it. Right, right. Right. But if you meet certain standards as a facility, you can actually order it. You can say, you know what? I want I want a batch of cholera. Send me some some cholera or send me some of this. And and as long as you meet certain standards, they can say, OK, we'll send you uh, some of this, some samples because we keep that. Well, we keep those original source diseases because that helps us to be able to hedge against uh, that disease in the future. Now, a lot of this idea with homeoprophylaxis uh, originated out of like uh, smallpox, but it also uh, originated out of uh, some of this earlier, the earlier diseases like cholera, where individuals were trying to figure out how to, um, how to preserve and save people. 
So I'm thinking consult with a qualified homeopathic practitioner and get a personalized plan. So like, absolutely. This is, this is about informing you with enough information and as much as you want to give, but it's like the person out there, maybe they've never heard of this. You're opening their mind to this and like, maybe I should find a homeopathic practitioner. Yeah. Homeoprophylaxis runs parallel. It runs parallel to the vaccination program. So this is not, I wouldn't say this is something that's designed to replace it. If something want, if someone wants to do uh, the vaccine program, great. That's fantastic. I don't have anything against that. But we, we do know, we're very well aware that there are people who have had issues or concerns with those. And this is an option for those that uh, maybe do have concerns or have had sensitivities and, and still want to protect their bodies and pr- promote some level of health and prophylactic activity against maybe the next pandemic. Well, this is how we do it. So, when so yeah, we'll sit down with the patient. This? Would, they, it would, would it be the headline, there's already a pandemic? It would be up like, front, up so front, as soon as ha- possible. But there's a pandemic going on, I reach out to you. Not now, because they don't even know what the next thing is. Right? Yeah, so we can tr- we can use it during a pandemic. The great thing about homeo- homeopathics, originally homeo- homeopathy was we would wait for the symptoms to treat, right? But this idea of call, calling it homeoprophylaxis, prophylaxis essentially is hedge against, it's the... Um, prevention of it, right? So it's like we're prophylactic, prophylactically introducing something. So we're doing it ahead of actually even seeing those symptoms appear in an individual. So that's the prophylactic aspect of it. And so when instead of just waiting for those symptoms to appear, we're going to give you some of them prior so that we're already training the body to hedge against it. Okay. Do you have this so for COVID? We do. Yes. So we have this for, again, we, I mentioned that in INFCV is for COVID, uh, malaria, hepatitis, measles, mumps, Japanese encephalitis, all sorts of things. So you could take these instead of a vaccine before you travel overseas. Like is what you're saying to that missionary? You could. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If that was, if that was your choice and you felt like, Hey, this is a better option for me. Uh, or I'm I'm leery ba- because I've had a reaction to a vaccine, yeah. or for whatever reason, then this is a, a potential option for you to protect yourself, to give yourself an, another alternative of of safety, essentially. Every individual is unique, and so it's important to go armed with this information to your local healthcare practitioner. I feel like. Yeah, and know, so when when you come, when a patient you. comes to us, it, it might be for pediatric. So we're setting up a childhood. Uh, illness program, right? So they may have, okay, typical childhood diseases and ailments, right? So we could set up a plan for them. Or they might be traveling to a tropical area. So we're like, okay, well, that could be dengue. It could be uh, cholera. It could be hepatitis A. Uh, So there's lots of different things that we can sit down with people and create a a specific strategy based on them. Or they might just say, you know what, I'm, I'm wanting a boost because I am concerned that there is another pandemic coming. How do I prepare myself? Well, this is how we do it. Vitamin D is also pretty big. It's moving on. Let's do it. I yeah. like moving on. The idea of moving on is good. No, I like. So vitamin you know. D is fantastic. Uh, what we found actually during COVID, individuals who had optimized vitamin D, their their uh, outcomes were so much better in really? COVID. Yes. So all they had to do the single indicator of just making sure that their vitamin D was uh, was optimal. Uh, then their outcomes, uh, essentially, it, it provided a protective role against COVID-19. I've heard people talk about vitamin D, and then there's like systems biology, and there's, you know, let's say one symptom's happening. Well, what's going on downstream? I feel like we've talked about that so much, you know. But vitamin D is the one thing where you just take it. And you're pretty much, I've heard the consensus is just, just take it to get the levels up. We're not... It's not even a downstream, and I, it's way more complicated. I don't understand it, but I hear that that's sort of the way vitamin D is. Like, you're okay with just taking the vitamin D to get the levels up. Is it, where am I right? Where am I wrong? There. Well, research has shown that those values being optimal, which is between 50 and 80, uh, if you're around 30 or below 30, certainly that's uh, critical. That's a problem, and you're going to find most likely hormonal dysfunction with that. You're going to find immune suppression with that or difficulty uh, fighting off immune um, uh, invasions. 
And also you're going to experience most likely fatigue and a variety of other ailments. So vitamin D plays a critical role in a variety of areas in our health. It's hormone. We call it a vitamin, but it's actually a hormone. So it's a, a hormone that functions and is created in the liver. Now, the interesting thing about it, it's sunlight. So imagine this frequency. In our valley right now, red light is becoming a really big thing. People are really into frequencies right now, all of a sudden, right? And it's like, it's like sunlight delivers a frequency to us. It sends a frequency from millions of miles away, okay? And so we receive this frequency or this wavelength from the sun, and that wavelength penetrates through our bodies. And it has an impact. I mean, you can almost imagine, like, if you, if you stand next to a speaker, right, a loudspeaker at a concert, you can feel those vibrations. Well, the, ra- the, the wavelengths from the sun are doing the same thing. Maybe you just don't quite feel them as much, but you can feel the heat. You can feel that heat from the sun. A- and it's reverberating through your system. So it's stimulating, you could even say massaging lightly the organs of your body. Well, one of them specifically that we know, at least at this time, that is stimulated by exposure to the sun is the kidney. And the kidney, the frequency and the wavelengths from the sun will stimulate activity within the kidney to produce 25-dehydroxy. And 25-dehydroxy is sent to the liver, and the liver converts that and creates essentially the, the production of hormone known as vitamin D. Okay, So then we have this functional vitamin D hormone that we've synthesized internally in our body. That's the best way to get vitamin D. What happens, though, if you're in the northern hemisphere? The farther you are away from the sun, the less likely you are to get those direct rays or the frequencies, right, the wavelengths. Uh, and so if you're not able to get, let's say, in most areas, um, in, in our latitude, I say we need to get at least uh, 25 to 30 minutes of direct sun exposure without sunscreen with 75% of our body exposed to the sun. Does it matter what time of day? Uh, so that would be early morning is actually a really good time to do it. I like it because the rays aren't so strong. But even if you do it at high noon, still 25 to 30 minutes is not going to be problematic for you. It's going to be beneficial for you. It just feels so hard in the summertime. It's hot. This is the one time of year where I don't like to go out until like 8 o'clock at night and... When it's January, I'm going to be look back at this and be like, you were so spoiled. But that's yeah. the way it is. We're in summertime now. Yeah, and it just heat. feels so hot to be outside. Uh, it's very powerful. Yeah, but so. it, again, those rays are there. They stimulate the production of vitamin D. And that production of vitamin D is beneficial for our bodies. It helps our immune response. It's going to carry us in a better way, more resiliently through a pandemic. Licorice root. What's up with that? You have four bottles over here. I don't Before know. Before we, we move gonna... on to that, can okay. I just mention a couple more things? Like with yeah. vi- with regards to vitamin D. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so sunlight is the one thing, but also cod liver oil or, okay. or consuming liver, like a, a like a, or liver organ. You can do that to get vitamin D. Okay. Raw liver. Raw liver. Or, or you can do like minced. You can actually mince liver and throw it in your beef. Like if you're having ground beef, get some good quality ground beef chop up the liver as well or grind it up and then mix it with it and you won't even notice it. Some people can't consume liver because they can't stand the taste. So mix it with your um, mix it with your ground beef. Okay. And so anyway, that's one way to get it as well. And, and then also lastly is a supplement, right? Wait, is, is consuming liver good for your liver? Consuming liver is good for your liver. Yes. Okay. Con- liver, we, we look at it in a natural health world, we look at liver almost as a multivitamin. We look at it like a multivitamin for your body. It provides so many proteins, so many amino acids, so many of the beneficial things that your body needs to sustain life. Uh, Really, we look at it as a multivitamin. Okay, so licorice root. Now we can move on to licorice root. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt you on that. Uh, But licorice root is a fantastic herb, and it's something that uh, can be used in a variety of different ways, uh, not just even for viruses, but I use it a lot for upset tummy. If people have an upset stomach, it can help with coating the stomach and calming and cooling that. Uh, uh, Like if you have ulcers, it can be beneficial there. Uh, It can also be um, beneficial for tooth decay or a a sore throat. 
So simple, basic things like that. You can utilize uh, licorice root uh, for all of those conditions. But one of the greatest things that we've, uh, I, we knew this before, but it came more prevalently on the scene during COVID was that licorice root interferes with viral replication. Well, that literally viral replication is how the virus sustains itself in your body. It takes over your cell. It gets into your cell. It takes over the machinery of your cell and it reproduces. It teaches your DNA to produce itself. So then your DNA begins instead of producing other cells that it should be producing or proteins, it begins to produce the virus. So boom, 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 starts creating the virus until you get so much virus packed in that cell that it goes and it lyses, it breaks. And then you have all these other viral particles that rush to a bunch of other cells in your body and they begin the same process. So taking licorice root will basically shut that process down and say, nope, we're not turning over the machinery to you, right? It's like the sheriff that decides to ride on the train to, uh, to prevent the, uh, to prevent the, the robbers from riding up beside and taking it over, right? A, a good old is, Western shootout. That's is where we licorice are. root in any of these supplements you carry here? Yes. I just yes. wanted to mention these white bottles, and we put them in the center maybe so we can see them. Yes, absolutely. So, so right here, here we have... The center right here. Oh, oh, here. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, you're good. I, I got I to gotta worry about the production. The people need to see. Uh, we have immune boost here. So we cold have and flu. Cold and flu remedy. Definitely one. Obviously flu. You'd think virus, viral. And then uh, we've got it in Gone Viral here, too. Gone Viral, a, a, a crowd favorite here at the yes. <laughs> Community Health and Wellness. And then Cool Coat Throat. These are all your supplements. You want These to are all about my it? formulas these that are I've plants? written. plants? I mean... What? These are all 100% plants, actually, in these formulas. Um, and, again, they're antiviral, a number of them. I The thing I love about herbals is that they mm -hmm. have um, multiplicity of action. They have a variety of compounds. When you consume, we've, we talk a lot about anthrocyanidins. We talk about uh, antioxidants. We talk about all these beneficial uh, plant compounds. And what we, what we often don't recognize is that most of those are in all plants. Most of those are in all plants. But what we're looking for is those, those plants that have specific characteristics based on how they've needed to adapt to their environment that is going to allow our bodies to have a certain education, right? They're going to teach our bodies how to prevent disease and how to prevent illness. Speaking of that, getting yourself ready for the next pandemic is probably setting the table, um, right? Getting yeah. the, the oh, house absolutely. ready for getting dinner. Getting yourself ready. Yes. So getting Putting your, your labs. house in order. Yeah, getting your house in order, right? And one huge thing, and it it it's a financial investment, but it's... I think it's pretty important, right? These labs. These Absolutely. Labs. So we've been working on labs and I've done them a few times in your office and it's a long, hard slog. But yeah. you keep reminding me when I'm having a tough day. You're like, remember all the stuff you were dealing with and how far you've come? Yes. Without those labs, like I wouldn't have even known where to start. Right. And I can't imagine where I'd be. Life is still hard. It's not like you just do the labs, everything gets figured out in a day and you're good. Yeah, you're just better. Yeah, better. Yeah. And then I have other things to do. Yeah, you're just better and be then you put more things on your plate. About. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's usually what happens with patients is yeah. like, oh my gosh, you've helped me still feel so much better. And, uh, uh, but now I'm back here because, you know, I was able to work so much more. I was able to spend so much more time. I was like, okay, yes. now we need to talk about time management. Yeah. Now we need yep. to talk about taking care of yourself. Yep. Right. Now we need to talk about the fact that you are number one in this scenario. And if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anybody. You, you have to take care of yourself. So you need to put yourself at the priority of care. And I see this so much in mothers. It happens a lot in mothers because it's so easy for them to deny themselves yes. at, the, at the needs of their children. And we, we honor that attitude or behavior, I think. I don't know that it's an attitude or behavior to, to honor. I, I do admire that you would put yourself ahead of someone else. I think that behavior is honorable. You'd put someone else ahead of you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think that is honorable, 100%. And I would say it's most honorable in moments, not in the span of life. Acute moments, especially yes. early on. I yes. think of just getting up at night five times and, you know, just literally everything is for the baby. 
But you're right. You got to put your oxygen mask on first before you assist the person next to you on the plane. Yeah, we have to realize that longevity wise, if we don't take care of number one, we don't take care of anybody. So, so these labs, what, tell me about so what we're going to do your health through regular blood labs. What we do with labs is we check everything. We check your liver. We check the kidney, the health of the lungs. We, we check the health of your, your cardiovascular system, your inflammatory markers, your potential for developing autoimmune related issues, your thyroid. Get a check. And I do a regular check like this. I recommend it to all my patients every year to at least do a full set of labs Every year. If you're in peak condition, we will only do one set of labs every year. Uh, if you're not in peak condition and we're working on certain things or we see, oh, there's a little infection that we need to clear out. Or if we see some imbalance in the liver or an imbalance in other places that we need to really hone in on, then we'll say, okay, maybe in three months or maybe in three weeks, depending on the urgency of the situation, we'll redraw certain factors and determine what impact we've had at that time. So it's important to begin the process of understanding your, your personal physiology. I think we talked a little bit about uh, uh, Brian... Remind me, Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson. We talked about he's gonna him. live forever. And, Don't die is his thing. Yeah. Good, good for like God bless him for making himself the most tested man. I think that's one thing he absolutely has done. Yeah, as he shared his results with everyone, and he doesn't have to do that. Those are his. That's his private medical records, right? He doesn't have to share his personal tests, but for you to have access to your personal tests. He has developed a system for him, and he's got millions of dollars, but he's developed a system for him that is ideal for him. And he has supplements and a variety of different things that he's extrapolated that to the world, right? But I don't think it works that way. In fact, I know it doesn't because he's, he's trying to extrapolate his labs to everyone else. And that, it's just not going to equate there's definitely going to be some good things that will cross over and be like, okay, yeah, this is work. This is going to work. And there will be people that are very similar to him that it will work for. But you don't just go and jump on every other, uh, you know, every little diet plan or every person who says, oh, this is the way to do it. I have the perfect miracle cure. The way to, the real way to do it is to find out what your personal physiology is, what your personal numbers say, and what your personal physiology calls for. What are the vitamins, nutrients, minerals? What is the specific diet that my body needs as a result of the environment, the stressors, and the, and the impact that I've placed on it in my life? Find yourself a good functional medicine doctor who can read the labs, interpret them, give you a plan. Like I love that you know, you look at all the numbers and I can just tell you that's where your brilliance comes in is you, you see these numbers and you see what mainstream medicine calls, you know, the normal. And then I see the narrow window where you're like, no, this is where we want to be an optimal. And then you set up, you know, have some of this in a tea yes. in the AM and try this supplement and da, da, da. And I just feel like you're in good. I just feel like I'm, I'm being taken care of. I have, I have, I'm in good hands, you know, trying right. to navigate. And that's because we don't know what's going on with our body. We can be as in tune with it as we are. We might know that something's wrong, but we don't know how to fix it. Right. And well, we're not and getting answers in, in mainstream medicine because they're probably just too busy. They weren't trained that way. And, you know, I'm not saying they're the devil. It's just. No, it's, a, know, it's, it's a difference of training. Yeah, and, and that's yeah. fine. And it's like you're good. At, you're really good at one thing. And that's that's great that we don't need you to be good at other things. And so. Um, but the fact of the matter is we're, we're kind of ending where we started. And that is you're going to look and be looking for a care provider. You should establish care with a care provider that's going to have an approach to health and, and um, treatment of ailments in the way that is most desirable for your approach, for what you inherently believe and feel like is going to be the right approach for you and your body. Every single one of us should have and does have body autonomy. We can make choices for our health, for our life, for ourselves. And what we want to do is empower you to be able to be well now, mm. right? And to have the access to the greatest healthcare options available. And that's what we provide for you. Namaste. Namaste, everyone. Where can they reach you, sir? 
Well, you can uh, find us online at chwheber.com or you can call into our office here at 435-657-3696. Be well now. Be well now. Be well now.